between the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs. It's about us. It's about that G on your helmet. And the game plan is simple here. It's chopping wood one chop at a time. For four quarters, it's him or me. It's you or me. That's this game. Today, it's us. Let's go. Let's go. White. Big hole. Touchdown, Georgia. Uh-oh. Watch out. Oh, with Robert. Ate him up. A little fade route to Bowers. Oh, I thought it. Touchdown. Good day to be a dog. Talking about a play into the Gator standard every single snap of the game. That's what this is about. Great pride. Pride in my performance. Pride in my teammates taking care of each other. If you want it today, you've got to go take it. Gators on three. One, two, three. Yes. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville for the annual get-together between the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs. And Georgia rolls into this one as the number one team in the country. The pageantry is back. A full house, half orange and blue, half red and black. Over a century of ill will between these two teams. As you take a look at the SEC, East standings, Georgia alone on top. Kentucky trying to keep pace. If Georgia beats Florida today and Kentucky loses to Mississippi State tonight, the Bulldogs, when they get back to Athens, will have known that they've already punched their ticket to Atlanta for the SEC title game. And we welcome you, everybody, Brad Nestler with Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. You know, this one has always been fun. I don't know that we've ever gotten to this stage of the season where we've seen two programs like this who still have quarterback situations, I guess is the right word. Well, I think Dan Mullen and Kirby Smart should be entrusted with the nuclear code because all week <laughs> it has been the story of this football game. We feel we've got an idea what's going to go, but until they run out there, we don't know. Yeah. Well, we think it's going to be a different quarterback for Florida, but we'll talk about that in a second. For Georgia, two guys, one guy that's filled in for who was supposed to be the starter in Stetson Bennett's been good. I think you could have made a lot of money after last year's game that if Stetson Bennett was starting for the number one team, you could have won a lot, but he's done well. JT Daniels, though, is healthy, but they're different style quarterbacks. Stetson Bennett is more the bootleg guy. Get the ball to the tight ends. He's got this offense purring, number one team in the country, but he can run with design runs. JT Daniels, drop it back and throw the ball deep. A completely different design. And for Georgia, there's a lot of people that think the other guy's the right guy, but today we think it's going to be Stetson. Well, Florida last year was on their way to beating Georgia, going on to the SEC championship game, rolling along. They're only eight and six since. Georgia hasn't lost since. And when those losses come questions about the head coach, the quarterbacks, and yeah, all of that. That's the way it goes. When you want to play big-time quarterback in big leagues, you got to win football games. Now, we saw Emory Jones at his best in the Alabama football game. We moved the ball. He's run the ball. These two quarterbacks both run the ball. But for Emory, he's been making a lot of the regular plays. This offense has been humming, but not enough explosive plays. The backup quarterback, Anthony Richardson, when he's come in, his middle name is explosive. He throws the ball down the field, a completely different look. There they are warming up. And the guy on the right is who the fans have been clamoring for. Will he be the guy that takes the first snaps? We'll find out shortly in Jacksonville. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS, is sponsored by State Farm, T-Mobile, Subway Restaurants, and by The Home Depot. The annual border rivalry. The Bulldogs, the Gators. You guys ready? It's going to be a fight. He's about to break Herschel Walker's record. And here comes the entire team. Kick is up. And it is good. Oh, my. Jordan Reed. Oh, fumbles it out of the end zone. Wow. Georgia. And Florida. Set to make some more memories today in Jacksonville. And here comes Dan Mullen and the Florida Gators. 
Well, one of the biggest stars in this game is one of the biggest human beings you will ever want to meet. Jordan Davis for Georgia, a midseason All-American, maybe plays his position better than any other player at any position in college football. He has been a dominant force on the inside for the number one ranked defense in the country. With more on that, third member of our team is Jamie Erdahl. Brad, how about this for a twist? That compelling, game-changing player is actually shy. Well, this according to Jordan Davis's mom, Shay Allen. Jordan and his mother had a sweet hug and a prayer upon arrival at this game here in Jacksonville today. Standing at six foot six, Davis is head and shoulders above most players on the field and pretty much everybody else off the field. <laughs> but his size is ideal for a tackle, but not really his weight as much. Kirby Smart told us yesterday 350 pounds is the money number for Davis that he can tell in his agility when he's less than that and he can certainly tell when he goes over that. Davis has had to curb a pretty good candy habit to stay under 350. But hey, when the Heisman whispers come about, it's worth it if you can fit into a Heisman suit at the end of the season. Hey, this is a candy weekend, Jamie. And that 340 is being very, very kind to Jordan Davis. I got to say, if I, I wish I could get on that scale because I'd be 185. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful day for football. Thursday and Friday, not so good here. In fact, tornado watch out on Thursday, but now it's 70. Mostly clear skies. Depending on who you talk to, it's either the 100th meeting between these teams or the 99th. They don't agree on anything. I'll just say it's been a century of ill will on the football field. But everybody outside has had a blast today, as they always do, as we're back to full capacity. Florida won the toss and deferred, so Georgia will be receiving the opening kickoff. Kiaris Jackson is back deep for the dogs at the goal line. Chrisman to kick off. Florida and Georgia, here we go. High, short kick. Kiaris Jackson takes it at the four. And Jackson's got a little seam out across the 30 to the 35 before he's knocked out of bounds. And Chrisman, the kicker, had to knock him out. So as everybody huddles on the sideline, is it going to be number 18 or number 13 to come out of that pile to lead Georgia onto the field? And it will be number 13, as we expected, as we take a look at our Papa John's starting lineup. Stetson Bennett, 8-2 and two as a starter for Georgia. He's led him to this point, and he'll at least, for the beginning of the game, take him from this point. And a handoff, Zamir White, and White goes for almost 10 on the opening snap. Last year, he went 75 on the opening snap. Yeah, but how about the first call? It's the same play that LSU gassed this Florida defense. Counter OT, same exact play. 14 times LSU ran that play successfully against Florida in that loss to the LSU to football team. So Georgia, one snap, one first down at the 46. Lemire White to the edge on the left side this time. A stiff arm, a broken tackle, and another good game for Zamir White as we Same take a look play at again. the rest of the lineup for Georgia offensively. Looks like this. Bowers, the freshman tight end on a lot of people's midseason All-American lists, and why not? He leads them in touchdowns and receptions. He's been something special. So already in Gatorland for the Bulldogs at the 48-yard line. James Cook in the backfield. That's Bowers in motion on second down and three. Play fake. The bootleg, the throw on the run is right on target to Darnell Washington, the big tight end. Another first down, Georgia. So the complimentary play to the counter is the counter bootleg. This time they've run it twice. Now they pull the guard and look how open the tight end is. You make one play go, and that's why this offense is humming under, St under Stetson Bennett. And they, Washington is a yeah, huge target. Huge target, and they've got three of them. Two other guys just like them. So Georgia's moved it to the 39 of Florida here on the opening drive. The rollout to the left side, and the throw is complete to Kiaris Jackson. He had three choices that time to go. 
two in the flat, and he waited for Kyrus Jackson. Kyrus Jackson has not had a lot of targets, only 10 all year. But they got him involved in this game early. So Georgia in the opening two minutes has already moved it to the 28-yard line of Florida. And right now that Florida defense has no idea what's coming. Is it going to be a bootleg, a pass, a quarterback run, or that counter again? James Cook straight up the middle for a couple. The Georgia offensive line coming off the ball. This is the defense of Florida and what it looks like. Kair Elam, one of the premier corners in the SEC, in the back end with a secondary. So that's the shortest game of the day so far, the two-yard run by Cook. Yeah, it's the first eight. time they didn't have the counteraction. Right. <laughs> and now they empty the backfield. Stetson Bennett throwing to the outside, completes it to McConkey, and he's close to a first down. Rashad Torrance brought him down just a little bit short, I think. So, ironically, this team that Kirby Smart has built with four and five stars, this year they're featuring a lot of players that weren't. I mean, Jordan Davis was a three-star. McConkey barely had any no star, star. <laughs> until he got offered. And, of course, Stetson Bennett is a walkout. So, the number one team in the, in the country with all those recruiting classes, three key players were not at the top of the recruiting list. First third down situation the dogs have faced. They're down at a yard, Zamir White in the Georgia backfield. They fake it to him. Bennett going to go deep and nobody home in the end zone. Incomplete. But it was the pressure that time off the edge. And that's really the difference of this Florida defense. They've not been able, this time it's coming from the corner from the outside. Right there. It's corner cat. No, it's not. It's a blitz from the inside that time. Thought it was from the edge, but it was not. Well, here's the first big play of the game. Georgia is going to go on fourth down at a yard. They take the grounding on the 13 on the offense. Oh, they called oh. intentional oh, grounding. Yeah, that was a late flag. We didn't see that until just now. Lost it down. Fourth. And I think because he had to get rid of it to save a sack, there has to be something there. You can't just say the receiver ran the wrong route. That doesn't get you out of it. Here's another look. See, to avoid the sack, he had to get rid of it, and they said, no, you can't do that. You can't say, well, I thought he was going to go long. That will not bail you out. And that changes, obviously, what's going to happen on the field. It's not fourth and a yard. With the penalty, it's fourth down at 10. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Jack Podlesny, who's 10 out of 13 on the year. He's now 10 out of 14 on the year. Wide right by quite a bit. So remember a year ago, Georgia started the game with a 75-yard touchdown, as Brad told you. This stop for this defense, after what they've been through and heard about it for two weeks, was huge. So Florida will be on offense for the first time here in Jacksonville when we come back. Want to tackle your fitness? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. cheer of the Florida crowd because Emory Jones is on the sideline and as we look at our lineups presented by Papa John's that means Anthony Richardson will start today for Florida and this is what the Florida fan base has been begging for yep and they'll work from just inside the 29 yard line as Gary said explosive is what Richardson gives them and on the run to the edge, good start. As Malik Davis with a good game. And the rest of the offense for Florida. Guy that's coming off a career game for him. Justin Shorter, a couple of touchdowns last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, and they lost LSU. They're a little banged up at wide receiver. A couple guys that aren't going to play today. Richardson throws short. And it's complete to gamble. And Georgia defensively will face a third down here as Florida going in a hurry up. We talk a lot about Jordan Davis, but Jalen Carter had a monster game two weeks ago against Kentucky. Did a little bit of everything. Sacked the quarterback, blocked kicks, 
And I call him a mini version of Jordan Davis at 330. A little bit smaller than Jordan. So uh, Florida simulated they were going to go hurry up and kept the Georgia defense out of their nickel package. Empty backfield. Let's see if Richardson uses his legs on third and three. He's trying to, but he'll go down, and it's fourth. Devontae Wyatt and Nolan Smith there to meet him. So in SEC play, this Florida team has run the ball 192 times. Half of them have been by the quarterback. 50% no. of the plays. I think Georgia is well aware of that. To stop the running game for Florida, you must stop the quarterback. Jeremy Crawshaw will punt. Kiaris Jackson got it to about the 33 on the return. 9.27 remaining first quarter. Georgia that went right down the field the first time they had it on offense and missed a field goal has it back when we come back. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today, and you can also catch Gary joining the HQ team right after our game here today. Well, last time that Georgia offense had it going, but then on third and short, they got the attention of running. I think this play was called smartly by Tom Munkin that they would go for it on fourth down. But with the penalty, they have to kick the field goal and miss it, so they get a zero. Lost opportunity after going right down the field yeah. quickly. I like the third down call knowing that you could go for it on fourth down. Yeah. You never call it thinking you're going to get called for a penalty. James Cook trying to get wide. And Florida does a nice job bringing him down after a pickup of two. So last year in the first half of this game, Florida's best defensive tackle, Zach Carter, did not play because he had a suspension from the prior game for getting in a fight. He's their best sack player with six. He gets the most tackles for a loss. A very important player because in the first half, he wasn't there a year ago. Georgia empties its backfield again. Stetson Bennett in the shotgun on second down and eight. Pressure up the middle. He throws. I don't know if it was a middle screen to the tight end, but he threw it in the dirt. And Jerron Dexter was the guy putting on some pressure. If you're a fan of Florida, you want to see this defense tackle well. They're averaging 12 missed tackles a game. It's really hurt them. It's so unusual watching Florida play defense over years, year after year. This team just doesn't seem to tackle as well as Florida defenses in the past. First long yardage situation for Georgia on third down. Third and eight. Bennett in trouble. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Throws a strike to James Cook for the first down. So when we talked to Todd Munkin, we asked, what separates Stetson Bennett from JT Daniels? He says he just gives us more wheels, more options to call different types of plays, helps our offensive line when they break down. we just comfortable the way we can call the game. With him. How about Florida was offside? Brenton Cox, I thought, got a big jump unless he was drawn offside. We have a penalty down. Offside on the defense, number one, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Brenton Cox, former Georgia player. And first six games, now competition a little bit different over the course, but uh, against LSU, as you said, Gary, that was a mess. Yeah, that was a surprise, too. LSU came into that game now averaging less than two yards per carry, and they exploded against this defense. Through six games, Florida said, we got an elite defense or close to it. Yeah. After that game, it's been a two-week storyline here. So with the penalty, first and five, just on the, the Georgia side of the 50. Whoops, nobody home on the handoff, and Bennett does it himself. It's going to be a play fake or riding his tailback, and his tailback was not home. Zamir White went straight up. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't work very often, but he got him out of it. And, you know, that's one of the things that you have to take a look at here for Stetson Bennett. 
he's played well knowing there's no one pushing him from behind. Right. But now he knows that if things don't go well, JT Daniels is ready. And of course, Stetson Bennett got hurt in this game a year ago, played through it, but his effectiveness was not there after the first quarter. Here he is on first down with plenty of time. Lost it to Zamir White. He dropped the ball. I don't know if he ever had it. Yeah, they're signaling incomplete. Pretty good uh, coverage that time by Hopper, number 28, the inside linebacker. He forced him outside, which you have to do. Good throw, obviously should have caught the ball, but if you're an inside linebacker, you can't let that guy beat you inside because those go for touchdowns. Remember we saw James Cook do that? Yeah. Get inside and score a touchdown. He forced him wide. Samir White had only two catches coming in to this game. Should have had that one. He'll come out. James Cook comes in. Jermaine Burton will be in motion. Second and ten. Cook for a couple. It'll be third down and eight upcoming. Brenton Cox in on the tackle. You see A.D. Mitchell trotting from the sideline over to the right side. So even freshman though it, who's one of their top receivers. Even though it looks like a spread formation with four wide receivers, there's still a tight end in the game. And that's Bowers who sets up shop on the left wing on third down and eight. And now just A.D. Mitchell uh, jumped. Another penalty on third, third down. Number five in the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. There's number five on number five out there. And Elam clapping his hands because the freshman jumped. So third down has been the story of this game the last couple of years. Last year in this game, Georgia held, excuse me, Georgia was two for 13. That's an, been an important stat. Two years ago and when they won, they were 12 for 18. Yeah, that's Jake Fromm. They had yeah, unbelievable exactly. on third down. Third down here in 13. Bennett trying to throw on the run and in and out of the right hand of Bowers would have been a first down. That time, number seven, Jeremiah Moon, who was chasing Stetson Bennett, he actually spied on the play. He lines up outside, but watch him just kind of stay there and look. He really doesn't rush, and he's got the quarterback and ends up making the play. And on the other end, a one-handed attempt by Bowers. Georgia forced to punt. Jake Camarda stands at his 40. Xavier Henderson is back deep for the Gators. Camarda trying to drop it inside the five, but Georgia can't get there. So they bring it out to the 20. Georgia had some things going on offense, but stall again. Florida on offense when we return. Adam Zucker in New York with this Jeep update. The Spartans have completed the largest comeback ever against Michigan back to 2004. Trailed by 16. Kenneth Walker III had five touchdowns. Charles Brantley with the ceiling interception in a meeting of undefeated. Mel Tucker, the first Spartans coach to start 2-0 against Michigan. Cites his old boss Nick Saban as his greatest influence. Ness and Gary, back to you. All right, Zuck, thanks. Our spotter Brian Muddleson just went into a deep state of depression as the Wolverines <laughs> lose. Here it's Florida and Georgia, no score for six minutes and change remaining first quarter. If you're just joining us, because maybe you watched that Michigan Michigan State game, Anthony Richardson's the starting quarterback, number 15 for Florida. Rolling out, now dropping back and throwing back on a wheel route. Complete. Kamari Gamble, the tight end. So I was kind of kidding Dan on the phone last night when we talked to him. I said, don't you have to start the game with a wheel route? Yeah. Since you <laughs> basically destroyed him with that. This time it was kind of a tight end wheel route. Still counts no matter whether it's a tight end or a back. It seems to give this Georgia defense some problems. Malik Davis, the tailback for Florida, had five catches for 100 yards yeah. mostly on that kind I of I remember. <laughs> All right, first down. 
Naquan right for a couple. Yeah, when you find something to attack the defense, I don't think there's anybody better in college football to keep attacking it with different formations. Now, they don't have a Kyle Trask throwing those type of balls. Some of these times, you know, the guy was pretty well covered and he stuck it in there. But I think today they're going to have to figure out a way because it's not going to stop. There were five-year-old kids in Georgia that learned what a wheel route was just from <laughs> that game last year. Down the middle to Naquan Wright. He just ran it again. At the 45. Good job that time by Anthony Richardson. The wheel route was covered, but it opened something out. You're going to get wheel here and then hook right there. It's a two-man route. It's not hard. Simple. One, two, take it. Third down at three. Richardson's three for three so far. Naquan Wright stays with him in the Gator backfield. Nicobe Dean calling signals for Georgia. Here comes some pressure, and the pressure forced an incompletion. Quay well, Walker was putting on the heat, I think. Yeah, well, that's one of those that's on the quarterback, though. So you see Dan talk to him. He, when we talked to Dan in Alabama, he says, yes, yeah, Anthony's really good, but the simple plays, he's not there yet. He should have thrown hot. The Florida receiver was right behind the blitz. He didn't throw hot. If you're going to get an earful, that's the kind of the you know, plus minus of Anthony Richardson, the easy plays he's not making. So the punt. Kiaris Jackson's going to stay out of the way on this one and hope it makes the end zone, and it does just in the corner. And the Georgia offense will take the field for the third time with 4-16 remaining in a scoreless first quarter in Jacksonville. No score in the first quarter. It's time now for our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile. Here's Jamie. Kirby Smart hails from Bainbridge, a city tucked into the southwest corner of the state of Georgia. Kirby playing and coaching. His path has taken him all over, but landing in Athens. Over in Gainesville, running back Damian Pierce was offered by Georgia before heading to the swamp. Pierce's hometown connection, though, back to Kirby and back to Bainbridge. Uh, it's just halfway between both Athens and Gainesville. Kirby told us always a hug shared between these two after this game in Jacksonville. Kirby, of course, an all-conference performer his senior season in the secondary for Georgia. Kenny McIntosh in the lineup for the first time in a while. He's been banged up. So that's a great sign for this Florida defense. One of the things that watching tape on Florida is you don't see that dis disruption by the defensive line in the backfield. It's not just sacks. Tackles for losses have been down for this. You've got to disrupt. Even if you don't make the tackle, you break up the rhythm of the play. They did a great job there. Second out of 10 from the 20. Throw to the outside, in and out of the hands. And a nice hit on the intended receiver, Rosemary Jack Saints, who broke his ankle in this game a year ago. Yeah, Abraham does a good job here. Tackle, bring your arms. You could tell for two weeks they've been hearing about it. When you have Todd, Todd Grantham right here, defensive coordinator, your team is not ranked 94th in missed tackles per game. You're going to practice tackling in the two weeks you have off. Third down at 10. Bennett, the quick throw on the wideout screen. And that's not going anywhere either. You get, the, you get the feeling that Florida doesn't believe Georgia's going to throw the ball down the field. They're attacking everything. Trey D made the hit. And it's a punting situation again for Georgia. And back comes Camarda to kick. He'll be inside his own 10. And down on the other end, Xavier Henderson. <laughs> Henderson has to backpedal to the 25. And got about seven on the return. Well, tomorrow the NFL on CBS features several outstanding matchups, including the Steelers heading to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Bengals take on the Jets. It's the Patriots on the road against the Chargers. And to get you all set for the day's action is JB and the guys at noon Eastern. The NFL today, tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. Ness, I got a cool stat for you. 
The Georgia rush defense has given up 63 yards a game. Right. Number two in the country. The Florida rush offense is number four, averaging 252. Four times 63 equals 252. Wow. You've got too much time on your hands. 63 yards a quarter. <laughs> if Florida could get half of 63, I think they'd take it each quarter. They're going to try to pitch it to get some of that here, and they do get a nice gain. Malik Davis run out of bounds. So the difference, the spread is about, you know, 190 yards, the difference between the two yardages. And so if, if split it in half, let's give both sides some credit here. Could this Florida team rush for 35, 40 yards a quarter? If so, they love it. So far, they've got 11. Mm, like you said, out of the 254 per game, 120 of it comes from their quarterbacks, be it Jones or in this case, Richardson. He's going to throw to the outside, throws a strike complete, and a first down to Justin Shorter. The decision to change quarterbacks was not an easy one. We all know that Anthony Richardson is extremely talented. We all know he's not completely ready with the full Dan Mullen offense, and Emory Jones has been playing pretty well. Yep. Last four games, he's averaged 70% completions. It's been the turnovers. 12 well, interceptions just, between yeah. the two. And, Keep it on the ground. Now look at that Whoa. Georgia defense run from inside out. Holy cow. Malik Davis thought he had something going until he ran into Trayvon Walker and company. Yeah, Trayvon Walker, Nolan Smith, whoever, just pick a number to Kobe Dean. They run from inside out. You see number seven, Quay Walker. There's no place to turn up. That's why you can have a 63 yards a game yeah. rush defense. Everybody wants a piece of the action, and they just feed off each other, the Georgia defenders. Yeah, if you don't hurry up and get the tackle, somebody else will. <laughs> exactly. Second down and nine. This time, busting through is Davis. Still going. Nope, that's Damian Pierce. And he just pierced the Georgia defense for the biggest play of the game so far. And he ran right at it. Straight north and south. One of the reasons, you know, you don't want to take on those big guys inside, but they're fast to the outside. And just up crease. Great job inside. Egwin Egukin, number 65, the center, did a great job on that one. Pierce had over 50 yards on his 15 carries last year in this game. That one got the Gators a first down. The 36 of Georgia. Richardson throws. And it's Gamble again on the receive again. I think Dan was trying to come up with a big play. I think it was one of those plays where everybody looks to the sideline hoping that they'll switch defenses and they quick snap it. Georgia was ready. Wow. Tricky. Remember we saw that? I think it was LSU. Alabama did it to LSU in a game two or three years ago. Kamari Gamble with three catches already here in the first quarter that has 15 seconds remaining. And now play fake and looking for a flag as Copeland doesn't get it. It's third down. He asked me another big difference in this Florida team this year. Obviously, Kyle Trask threw the ball on a high level, but they don't have those difference makers. You know, there's no Kadarius. Kyle Cole, Pitts. Kyle Pitts. I mean, there's really not a receiver that is that explosive, take it deep, and everybody's kind of shaking in their boots. 0 for 2 on the third down conversions are the Gators. This is third and seven as the Georgia faithful start to make some noise here. Richardson down the middle is high. No flag. I think Shorter slipped on the play. The blitz was picked up nicely that time by the offensive line for the Gators. But I think Justin Shorter slipped on the play, or was it just a high throw? Let's see what happens here. Comes in. Yep. Yeah, he did slip. So that forces a field goal. Jason Chrisman will try from 51 yards away. Three out of four so far, as long as right where this one is. No good. Wide left. One for each team. George's was wide right. Chrisman's wide left as the first quarter comes to an end. We played 15. We're right where we started, 0-0 between the Gators and the Dogs. The Home Depot SEC on CBS from 
Jacksonville as we are set to start the second quarter. And a scoreless first 15 minutes. Georgia with the ball back following the missed field goal by the Gators. And they work from just outside their own 33 yard line. And Zamir White goes for about three. Scoreless first quarter, Gary, last year, a 14 point hole that Florida had to dig themselves out of. I got to think Florida right now, even though we have missed field goals by both teams, is thinking, hey, we can play with these guys. Absolutely. They got off, they ran the ball for 30 yards in the first quarter. I mean, they've got to take, it's not going to be easy. Again, they get to 120, 150 right. running the ball in the game, they'll be thrilled because it's not easy sledding, but the mistakes that Georgia made themselves on third down has been their big stopping point so far in the game. Low snap, Bennett scoops it off the ground and then yeah. throws a dart complete to Kiaris yeah. Jackson. So we always talk about, that's, by the way, second target for Kiaris. We always talk about the big arm. How big of an arm do you need? If you can throw this ball right here, this 15-yard route, you're good enough. That's right, good. right over the umpire's head. <laughs> Matt Luke. Matt, Matt Luke says, just give him time. Just give him time, and he can do it. Offensive line coach for the Dogs. Stetson Bennett, 6 out of 10 here early. Last year, he was 5 out of 16 for the game. Back to throw again. This time, he's going deep. And he overshoots everybody. McConkey was the intended receiver. But McConkey got forced too far inside that time. When you throw the ball down the middle like that, you have to be very careful of the safety in the middle of the field. He got away with it, but on that one, I thought for sure that ball's thrown five yards shorter, it could have been picked off. Second and 10 from the 48. James Cook in the backfield with Bennett. And he'll get the draw play call. And a nice open field tackle by Trey Dean. There's a flag down. Yeah, but Javon Dexter, number nine, says, I got held, and that's why the play worked. Was it the center, Van Fran, that got, is going to get called? David Smith will tell us. Holding, number 63 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the yep. previous spot. Replay, second down. It is the center. Irvine is a highly recruited nose tackle. It's always college football, these nines and fives and sixes <laughs> for the defensive lineman. You got to keep it straight. But uh, he knew he got held, and he saw that yellow flag, and he knew it was him, and the ball to go backward. Another penalty. Been 11 years since the matchup between these two teams went scoreless through the first quarter, as this one did. And now a couple of minutes into the second quarter, Georgia with a second and 20. Bennett throws across the middle, complete. Another flag is down. Kenny McIntosh still going. Well, let's see what this marker is about. Looks like might be in the area of holding against Florida. Just by judging where the flag went down, unless Georgia had a lineman downfield. Kirby Smart doesn't know what it is either. He's trying to listen in to the conversation with the officials. I don't think there was a lineman downfield. Well, it was top of the screen holding by the corner on the play. Not involved in the play. It was holding before the pass. Holding, number five on the defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot results in automatic first down. Yeah, it was Elam to the outside, holding before the ball. Just a lot of fighting right there, and uh, it's hard to play. <laughs> Bump and run if you don't hold. They seem to be a lot of holding in college football on the receivers. They let them get away a lot, but that was too much. Didn't matter. It was a positive play anyway, but Kirby, did he take the penalty? His first down, an automatic first down, so they go right back to the original line of scrimmage where they started this thing. Zamir White hit in the backfield made something out of nothing there ended up getting about five or six yards the abate in on the tackle how about georgia on this play? i think darnell washington thought this is a pass on this play watch him go out and they're running right behind him on the play and it still works coming across watch him just kind of dodge 
He, he's like, what? <laughs> what is <laughs> A phantom block. Yes. <laughs> They'll take the six-yard gain, second and four. White broke out the back end. Almost took it. He slips on his own at the 32. And Ness, guess what the play was? Counter. You got it. This is about the fourth time this play has been run in this game. Watch the pulling from the back guard and tackle. Seal block. Great job by the seal block. I think it was Bowers, number 19, that got that block. And they creased him with it. I'll tell you what, if Zamir White doesn't slip, he's one-on-one -on -one with Elam. And he's not fun to tackle. No, he's not. First down at the 33. Another five yards. Georgia likes to spread the wealth on the ground. They don't just feature one guy. They've got Zamir White, James Cook, Kendall Milton, who's not playing today, but Kenny McIntosh is back. And so those guys share the load in that Georgia backfield. Zamir White, the last couple of carries, getting a little bit lathered up. Got five more on the last handoff. They fake it to him. Cox giving chase on Bennett. Bennett's going to take off on his own. Stetson Bennett inside the 10. That was beautiful. I think three tight ends were in the on the field for Georgia on the play. I think they had Washington, Bowers, and Fitzpatrick right here, three of them. It's been a good formation for them, but Bennett with his wheels, that extra dimension, and he smartly gets down without taking a hit. At the end of it, get as much as you can, survive another play. First and goal, Georgia at the seven. White straight up the middle, inside the five. This is really interesting about this Georgia attack. Georgia uses two or more tight ends almost half the time in the game, 44% of the time. That's 18th in the nation, but they feature that, and now they're even going three tight ends, which means they really have eight blockers on the field. It's a really interesting formation that Todd Munkin is employing for his uh, Georgia football team the way they attack. Bowers and John Fitzpatrick, 86, both lined up on the right side in this case. There they are. Second down a goal. Bowers in motion. Blitz coming. James Cook runs right into it. I'll tell you, they had Bowers all in the flat. Now, if you fake that, I, I think... Todd Munkin will see that. He was stopped inside, but watch Bowers as he goes. He could be open here. No one's even going to cover him. He has an easy right to the cone right there play. So third down a goal. Best scoring opportunity so far by either team is at hand for the Bulldogs. Third and goal just inside the five. Bowers on the move again. Bennett scans the field. Might take off on his own. He wasn't going to make it. Though. Got about a yard. Rashard Torrance, number 22, the safety, was hunting him all the way. You get a pick at the bottom down here coming out from the side. Watch the collision on the bottom of the screen. Could have been called, but the ball is not thrown there once it's run. Obviously, there's no pick called, but that's about all you could get out of it. And a good stop by that Florida defense. And that forces Bud Lesney in for the field goal. Missed his first one, but that was long range. This one will be from 21. He just tucked it inside the left in. upright. <laughs> Almost grazed the upright, but yeah. he got it. If he was five yards back, that would not have been good. That close. Three-nothing. Georgia in front. Adam Zucker with this update. Number four, Oklahoma, a team that made its quarterback change against rival Texas. Sees Caleb Williams go to Marvin Mims for 67 yards to take a 14-7 lead on Texas Tech. Number four now, hoping to still be number four come Tuesday night, guys. All right, Zuck, Georgia hoping to be number one on Tuesday night. And points are at a premium right now. Three-nothing after Georgia went 63 yards in 11 plays. Most of it was Amir White and 
the scramble by Stetson Bennett to get their field goal. Fair catch taken at the goal line. So the Gators will come out to the 25. The activity is reborn in the new Paramount Plus original movie, Paranormal Activity, Next of Ken. A young filmmaker uncovers an unexplainable presence that is following her in Paranormal Activity, Next of Ken, now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Head to Paramount Plus to try for free. So early curious thought here about this design of the offense with Anthony Richardson in. Not one designed run for Richardson in the game so far. Fourth series of the game. Two punts and a missed field goal. He's had one attempt, but that was on a pass sack. Georgia delayed blitz. Richardson double clutches and throws complete. And it's Jacob Copeland for a first down. Well, you can see the ability, the explosive ability. Big, tall, six foot five ish, 230, 40 pounds, weights, throws a perfect ball right over the outstretched arm that time of Nolan Smith. And a first down for the Gators at the 41. Richardson comes back near side this time. That was crafty right there. Threw that one side arm just before he got hit. Got it to Zipperer. Picks up about seven. Here's what Gary was talking about. Watch the quick feed. He knows he's going to get pressure. Steps in, and zips it just as he's getting hit. Very nice. Second down and three. Naquan right behind him. And a pistol set here. He'll get the carry. Try to bounce it outside and does just enough to get the Gator first down. And the season numbers between. The two quarterbacks, here's how they look. And a lot more snaps, obviously, for Emory Jones. As Gary said, not that he played poorly. The turnover problem is an issue. Right from the start of the season, he really never solved it. Back to the ground for a couple is Damian Pierce. When we talked to Dan, he was adamant that we are not just going to be a pass happy team. He says, I understand they're hard to run the ball against. He said, but I can't. He says, I understand they're hard to run the ball against. He said, but I can't just be, you know, uh, throw it 45 times right. in this game. I've got to continue to peck away and at least make them honor the run. And as he told Jamie in the pregame, it's not about perfect balance yards wise. Right. It's just to keep Georgia on their heels a little bit between run and pass. This is a pass. Maybe Richardson throws late out of bounds incomplete. Well, number 99 has been the center of attention the way he plays the nose tackle position. This time he's stunned into the outside. Good job by that third offensive. Maybe the, one of the surprises of this season, it's been disappointing lately, has been, I think this offensive line has played better than people thought yep. in Florida. That time, pretty good. That time Richard Garage probably felt like he was blocking a garage with Jordan Davis. Third down and seven. Richardson on the keeper. And he's going to be short. Decision time for Dan Mullen now. He got just enough. First design run. That was an option. Does he go for it on fourth down? Channing Tindall made the tackle after this run by Richardson. Here's they're going. Fourth and a what yard and a half basically. Yeah. I don't think it's quite two. No, it's not quite two. Damian Pierce back into the backfield. There's the big guys inside both of the nose tackles Carter and Davis are lined up inside. Richardson quarterback run all the way easily picks up the first down and he's still going. Well, the comparisons have been of Cam Newton. And that right there is the Cam Newton third and fourth down offense. Pull the backside guard. It's Reese this time. Follow behind. And you better have somebody to tackle this big guy. Because on these short yardage plays, that number 15, we've seen it before, running plays like this in this game. That is uh, Tebow-like. There's the numbers we were talking about, 120 yards. A game from that quarterback position on the ground. That was a big pickup on fourth. 
Now Richardson wants to go back to the air, but Georgia won't let him. The sack by Jalen Carter, the mini Jordan Davis. I think he just wrapped around this time. It took a while for him to come around, but I think he comes around like this. Stunt inside, and yes, he comes around with a tackle game. End comes down, tackle goes around. Woo! That's a 330, 20, 30 pound guy with those type of wheels. We've seen him block from the fullback position. We've seen him catch, catch passes. He is a unique player. He gets kind of in the shadow of Jordan Davis. It's a big shadow. It is a big shadow. <laughs> oh, look at this. Quarterback back here, 15 yards back. Emory Jones. Double pass coming. Richardson flips it. Incomplete. Georgia broke it up at the nine-yard line. Well, we might have been surprised a little bit of it. but Jamie, Jamie wasn't, I don't think. Jamie's seen it before, and she got tipped off this play was coming, but either was Georgia. Watch Georgia on this play. They stay deep. They stay in their zone, and there is nobody to go deep to. Jamie? Yeah, Dan Mullen actually told me that he got that play from Danny Werfel. Danny Werfel's playing flag football, seven-on-seven seven ball. He pulled this page out of the playbook, gave it to Dan Mullen this summer, and said, if you're so creative, put it in, and there it was. And it almost worked, but Georgia was on top of it. Third down and 20. Oh, all kinds of movement, it appeared. You know, blow this one dead. You know what I think Danny Werfel might just kind of be saying? Is coach, I didn't think you should do it on second and 20, though. <laughs> I think that's like a first and 10 or second and eight play Full because start. passing situation the like that. Five yard penalty. Still third down. No way it fooled them. And now it's third down at a mile as they back up. The line of scrimmage is going to be outside the 45 now. They've got to get all the way to the 21 to pick up a first down. Florida hasn't converted a third down, and there's not a lot of great plays in the book for this particular situation. Here's a late pitch. Well, maybe it'll work. Not quite. Naquan Wright brought down. It, it did get him about the 15 yards for a field goal try, though. Now, Kobe Dean made the tackle. To get a 50-yard field goal, they needed about 15. The option gets them just about enough, I think. I think they'll try a field goal here. Oh, it's third and 13 still. I'm sorry, my fault. Yeah. Is it? I thought it was fourth, I thought down, it was fourth down. Fourth down on the field. Yeah, they got it. The marker graphic. says fourth down as well. The down marker says fourth down. It's fourth down. Yeah, they're going, they're for, going it. for it. Okay. Richardson loads. Had to throw with pressure. Incomplete. Georgia takes over. Well, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't try the field goal. It was long enough last time. He just missed it wide right. That's a lot of yards to pick up on fourth and 14. So a trick play that didn't work, a penalty that was costly, and a fourth down not converted. Georgia takes over when we come back. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. Catch a must-see Mountain West matchup. Fresno State battles number 21 San Diego State who looked to try to keep their record perfect. Aztecs, one of the few remaining unbeatens in the country. You know, after the first three series when they went three plays, four plays, eight plays, you know, Georgia's kind of been pushing with 27 plays. They, at least they had 11 plays to kind of rest the defense. Take over here after the failed fourth down as we take a look at uh, testing your knowledge of the athletic trivia question. When was the last time Georgia was ranked number one entering their game against Florida? And for Florida, it's a record breaker. They've never played two number one teams in the country in the same season. They did earlier against Alabama and played them very close. And now here they are, their annual matchup with Georgia, ranked number one. Bennett, off play action, lobs it. Darnell Washington rumbling down the sideline. The big fella's got it all the way down around the 35. Well, Georgia and Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator tried to give the wheel route. It was covered. So, good job by Stetson Bennett. Comes to his secondary receiver. The tight end coming across. Good quarterback play that time by Bennett. Wants to throw again on first down. Airs it far side. This is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Torrance. Boy, followed by bad quarterback play. Yep. 
Yeah, that's exactly the look right there. I don't know what he thought um, he had here. Completely covered on the play. He's throwing it. There's no leverage at all. The Florida player is actually four yards deeper than the tight end on the play. Not a chance in the world to complete that. If Dorrance doesn't get it, the other Gator gets exactly. it. Exactly. Well, there you see our orange and blue and our red and black split right down the middle and right down the uprights. Back-to-back -back plays, one good, one not so good yeah. by Stetson Bennett. Good Stetson on the first one. They go real route this time. He sees the wheel is covered. He drops it off. And then on first down, right after that good play, they go wheel route again. And for whatever reason, he does not see the blue jersey. And as Ness said, two guys could have picked that one off. And you make those kind of mistakes, and you got a five-star quarterback behind you, you never know. They're only about three feet apart over there on the sideline. So the good news is for Florida fans, you've got the ball back. The bad news is you're standing in your own end zone because they spotted that. Actually, they had it at the two, and they backed it up to the one. Run all the way for Richardson. Oh, he's hit. Lost a little bit of yardage. Dan Mullen was very upset with the spot. He was running on the field. He was arguing with the referees, and it's a big difference. You know, backed up that close, not much you can do fancy. And, you know, for Florida, they only need one first down to get out of the half here, basically. I don't know if they'll be able to get it. Lucky that wasn't a safety, and he's still in the ear of the official. Second down and 10 from the one. Richardson runs all the way again. This time he gets a little room to breathe. Still going with no whistle, I guess. And the ball came out at the end. Georgia's got it. Nolan Smith is in the end zone. Georgia touchdown. So with the new rule allowing the ball carry to be pushed forward, Georgia, I, I was going to say, they tried to tackle the ball and let Richard get too many yards, but they continued to tackle the ball and tackle the ball. The whistle did not blow, and he steals it at the end. He goes down. It's not going to be a touchdown, but is it Georgia's ball? That's the question. Now here's a look at Nolan Smith ripping. I think it should be George's ball. Anthony right Richardson there. was still going forward on the play. Gene Steratore, our rules official, is going to join us right now, Gene. And I agree with Gary. Without a whistle there, and I don't think there should have been because the forward momentum, the progress never does stop. He continues to, to work his way forward. But in that process, as you guys said. Recovered by Georgia. When the player recovered the fumble, his knee was down at that spot. It'll be first down Georgia at that spot. Very well said by the referee. No and, progress. And, the change of possession, player down by contact. And Gene, the result is the rule that was changed that allows people to push the runner forward, and this is what can happen. But usually, maybe, yeah. what, maybe eight years ago, they would have called that forward progress, but not now. Yeah, and you know, Gary, with that new change, you probably wouldn't have that slow movement You're forward right, without right. some momentum behind him either. So uh, that's leading to more more plays like this. I agree with you. You know what momentum Florida had just got taken away by the fumble recovery yes. by Nolan Smith. <laughs> there's momentum and then there's momentum. That's right. So they're going to see, I think, where they want to spot the ball as they've already made the call. And they're reviewing the play again. But as we see it, this is how it looked to us. And it would be right about at the 11-yard line, which is where they spotted it. Yeah. Nolan Smith instinctively gets up and heads to the end zone, but he was already down. Yeah. He took the ball away. Hey, listen, we saw Caleb Williams, the Oklahoma quarterback, do something like this and make a huge first down. This is just a big a play here for the Georgia defense and Nolan Smith. And from up above, number four. Who had a huge game against South Carolina? Had a forced fumble, eight tackles, a sack and a half. And since that time, this is one of his biggest plays of this so far undefeated season for the Bulldogs. I, I really was just about to say 
that Georgia, by going for the ball and trying to rip the ball loose, actually gave Richardson an extra five yards, and it may get him out of the half, and all of a sudden he comes up with the ball. After further review, the ruling on the field of a fumble is confirmed, recovered by the defense at the 11-yard line. First down, Georgia. Yep, it's going to look just about the same. Now, Ness, we were here a few years ago when the Florida defense had like an eight-play defensive goal line yeah, stand. Right. They need something like that to stay in the game right here. Big play by the junior outside linebacker from Savannah, Georgia, Nolan Smith. So now Stetson Bennett and the Georgia offense on a very short field following the fumble recovery. They have first down at the 11-yard line. They can get a first down at the one, so it's not first and goal here from the 11. James Cook with Bennett in the backfield. Gets the carry. James Cook gets the touchdown, Georgia. Costly turnover Beautiful. in one play. Georgia makes it pay. Beautiful job by Van Pran and Erickson. The center and the right guard. Watch them double and then get to the linebacker. They push the tackle. They engage and then they go to the second level and they walk into it. Beautiful offensive line play by Georgia on that run. But Leslie in for the point after. Marta, the hold, the kick is up and good. How costly can turnovers be? This costly. Nolan Smith, the fumble recovery at the 11 yard line. And Georgia won't have many scoring drives shorter than six seconds for James Cook to Pater. 10 0 Bulldogs. Adam Zucker back in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, B.J. Rick and I get you caught up on today's action. Remember, Florida State and Clemson used to decide the ACC Atlantic, both unranked, first time since 2010. How about this play? Lawrence Toa Feely pulls a Michael Dyer, doesn't hit the grass, and then the big toe of Toa Feely keeps him in bounds for the touchdown. Clemson just scored to take the lead back, 17-13. That's Gary, see it happen. All right, Zuck. <laughs> Again, two minutes, 16 seconds. Georgia, one play scoring drive. They've had four of those this year. I think Stetson, nobody was happier than Stetson Bennett. You're not seeing kidding. That fumble recovery. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Kamar has got it teed up. Still 2-16 remaining in the half. Florida will start from the 25 with a full complement of timeouts remaining. Time to test your knowledge with our trivia question. Was the last time Georgia was ranked number one entering their game against Florida? How about 1942? They won kind of big. <laughs> they went on to win the national championship, by the way, and Frankie Sinkwich won the Heisman Trophy. So a lot of stuff going on in 42. I'm wondering how much confidence Dan Mullen has in Anthony Richardson here. Two minutes, does he let him go two-minute drill? What does he try to do with his young quarterback? And everybody jumping on the offensive line. There should be no surprise for this Georgia, excuse me, Florida team in moving before the Close start. Down. Number 70 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Michael Tarquin, the tackle, yeah, jumps. If you turn on any game tape, you're going to know that Georgia shifts late just like that. Well, the last scoreless half was four years ago against Georgia. And that didn't go so well for the Gators. Here's the option. Richardson will keep it, and he gets nothing. And... Maybe a half yard, I guess. Trayvon Walker that time, number 44, turned the play inside. Richardson wanted to get out on that option, and Walker turns it in and then grabs onto the feet for the tackle. Now, 
Got to believe Kirby will call timeout if they get a stop right here. Georgia has three timeouts remaining. Delayed blitz by Nakobe Dean. And another interception. This one's Nolan Smith. Back to back. Huge plays for number four. And I think Walker, number 44, got a tip on the play. Back to back big plays by Walker. He snops the option, and I think he tips this ball. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He drops back and tips it. And to Kobe Dean was right in the face of Richardson, right in the chest, I should say. That maybe had something to do with that pass. Walker puts his hand in the dirt, plays defensive end, plays outside linebacker, drops, reacts to the eyes of the quarterback and makes the play. What a defensive play. And what we said about this Georgia defense, they start to feed off each other. And that was three dogs hunting right there. And now Georgia on a short field again. The 36-yard line, first down. Play fake, Bennett loads, going deep to the end zone. Kiaris Jackson has got it. Six yards in the corner of the end zone. Perfectly thrown ball. Makes the catch. Does his shin come down before the bottom comes down? Does he get that left foot down? I think he does. That's a touchdown. AT&T 5G pylon cam gives you a look right there of the left knee getting in. He's got possession and as a 36 yard again one play touchdown. Extra point is good. So yes we said Florida needed one first down to get out of the half. What do they get? Two turnovers and 14 points the other way. Kiaris Jackson in the corner of the end zone. Georgia, big plays in the last couple minutes. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Adam Rook and BJ will bring you a first half analysis and all the highlights from around the country on a busy day in college football. Talk about a busy day in college football. How about a busy 41 seconds here in Jacksonville? Two one-play drives, one of six seconds, one of eight seconds, has completely put this in Georgia's favor right now late into the second quarter. And that's time to do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Here's Jamie. Well, it's Halloween weekend, and we're seeing a lot of fantastic costumes, obviously, here in Jacksonville. But one that hit pretty close to home for us was one of our crew members, Dan Urbeck and his wife, Jean, and his three unbelievably cute kids <laughs> turned into Brad, Gary, and Jamie. I look good. Halloween. I think I look great. That is Michaela playing the role of Jamie. And then Madden and Mason, you know, they got a little hungry as the, during this photo shoot, so apparently they started chewing on their microphone. So, Brad, Gary, I don't think you should start doing that, but they thought it was kind of a tasty snack. Uh, How cute is that? Happy Halloween from the Urbeck family and from the CBS Sports family. Uh, there's Dan. There's Dan. Hey, Dan. <laughs> good one, Dan. <laughs> Kids look great. Yeah, we haven't chewed on our microphones yet to this point. 135, the Florida fans are gnawing on something right now after what just transpired in the last 41 seconds. Minute 35, got a guy down, hopefully just cramps uh, for Georgia. Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint, and <laughs> well, we, we saw what happened to him a year ago in same this game. Ends up, right? Yeah, same spot almost. Yep. Only this time, hopefully, it's just a cramp or a little bit of a hamstring. Last year, it was a broken ankle on one of the uglier plays of the year. It was a touchdown catch for him last year, though. We'll try to check on him. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Anthony Richardson, last time he threw a pass, it was intercepted. Last time he carried the ball, they ripped it out of his hands for a fumble recovery. Let's see what Dan Mullen has him do here. Three timeouts from Eddie, minute 35 till halftime. He's going to throw the quick pass out in the flat to Henderson. Let's take you back to the touchdown. Yeah, one more look at the coverage. The deep safety 
This is tough to cover one on one when you're standing flat footed and a guy's coming at you full speed. He gets beat on the deep route. Kind of a man to man coverage, but Torrance is so far away on the play that he really could not get up to speed and match Jackson on the play. Harris Jackson was Georgia's leading receiver last year. Everybody thinks it was George Pickens. About 36 balls. He been a little bit banged up coming into the early part of this season, mostly returning punts, and that's his first touchdown catch of the year, and it was a big one to give Georgia a 17 to nothing lead. And you can see on both of those two passes how that secondary for Georgia clamps down and make tackles. You throw it, but you don't get a lot of yards after catch. Quarterback draw here. Richardson hit in the backfield, but he gets the first down. On a third and one. Well, I thought Devontae Wyatt had him that time for a sack, and Kirby would have called timeout on the play and forced him to punt again. The shift on the Georgia front, and then the penetration right there, but at 6'4, 235 pounds, just kept powering ahead. We're under a minute now. In the half, as Florida gets the ball to start the third quarter. Richardson, can he come up with something big here? Gets a completion. Dan has to take a timeout here, right? He didn't before first down. I think he just did. Yes. Elite Davis on the receiving end of that one. And we'll be back in 30 seconds to see what Florida does next on offense. Thursday, have you heard about the new hit comedy Ghosts? Critics call it frightfully funny, hilariously spooky, and the fall's funniest. So prepare to be scared funny with a brand new episode of Ghosts Thursday at 9, 8 central here on CBS. Florida second down and three. At their own 44, Richardson flares it out again out of the backfield. It'll be a first down. Not by much, but Henderson, Xavier Henderson, with the reception. Quay Walker brought him down. That's an inside linebacker, ladies and gentlemen. 235 pounds chasing that in from inside out. Again, we talked about how Florida is missing 12 tackles a game. Georgia only misses four tackles a game. Richardson wanted to go long. He's not going anywhere. Adam Anderson's got him. I think we can see why this defense is elite. Uh-huh. Five and a half, half sacks on the year for Adam Anderson. I think that's him right there, lined up at the defensive end speed position. Gets inside, runs it back, and then enough time to still get inside and make the sack. Almost knocked the ball out, too. They all go for it now. Yep. Well, it paid off in the second quarter for him. We know that. There's Dan Lanning, the yep. defensive coordinator. He has to be a hot ticket, don't you think? He's just in his fourth year, but they just keep getting better on defense. And of course, Kirby Smart is a huge part of that defense. I, I Dan Lanning's a good coach. I got news for you. The way they're recruiting, they're not going to get a lot worse coming forward <laughs> in the future. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper SEC standings in the East. Here's how it looks. Georgia with a 17 another lead right now, trying to go to 6-0 in conference play. Florida already with three losses. Kentucky has Mississippi State tonight as... Kentucky tries to keep pace with Georgia, but if they lose that game and Georgia wins this one, uh, Georgia's going to the SEC championship as the winners of the East. Yeah, one time out. They need about 20 yards, maybe 21 yards for a field goal try of 50. Empty backfield except Anthony Richardson. Uh-oh. Oh, and it's intercepted by Nakomi Dean. Goodbye. Is gone. Touchdown, Georgia. <laughs> Mechanical engineer native uh, major just engineered a pick six. Well, you cannot throw the ball this late to the outside like that. Georgia sitting in a zone defense. They just see it all the way. That's a running back to the outside that Dean is matched up against Malik Davis. He knows he's got safety's help. He squatted, and the inexperience of Anthony Richardson is showing up in this game. Do you know that about a minute and 50 seconds ago, this was a 3-0 game right now? It's 24 to nothing. When 
Florida intercepted the ball. I was going to say that Florida darn near played a perfect half of football. It didn't end that way. They sure didn't. The Kobe Dean taking it to the house for the Dogs defense. The Dog defense, three turnovers, have turned into three touchdowns. And that tells the story on Anthony Richardson's face. 21 points in the last 209. I hope I've seen one swing this quickly. <laughs> Not, never, never like that. And again, I'm, I'm trying to think of what, okay, this is, I mean, thinking about it, 0 0, 3 0, whatever. I, I just think they're happy. Get out of here. Put pressure on Georgia. Ben, Bennett just made a mistake. And this defense, everybody says it's elite. I was thinking, you know, they treasure that goal line. You know, they're very valuable, pretty, pretty. Beware of the dog. Well, this defense, beware of the dogs. I'll tell you, they don't let anybody go in their territory. No trespassing on these guys. Just about every one of the defenders we talked to for Georgia said, we don't want them anywhere near our end zone, much less scoring. And it's still 46 points allowed through six and a half games. Amazing what's just transpired in the last two minutes. Final snap of the quarter. And what was a 3 0 game two and a half minutes ago is 24 to nothing, Georgia. Kirby Smart says, We don't want any John, just head to the locker room. We'll do our talking in there. End of the first half, 24 to nothing, dogs. For Jamie's halftime interview, coach. Go to Twitter, SEC on CBS. But right now, we send you Adam Zucker in our New York studio for the Geico Halftime Report. Zuck. All right, Ness. Dogs got hungry. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, a classic comeback by Sparty. And a Heisman hopeful's big day wasn't enough. We'll get you caught up after this word from your local station. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS, enters quarter number three. In what was a tight game, not so much right now. Georgia leads 24 to nothing. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. Been doing this sometimes longer than I'd like to recall. I don't ever remember a game that was that tight, widened up like that in a short period of time, Gary. Yeah, I, I think if uh, Florida could have finished the half, they got to feel Kirby's going to go in there and have to make a decision. You know, the last throw by Bennett is an interception. Right. Three points and a half. It's a tight game. But now it all comes out nicely, and the Georgia defense does it again. Boy, do they ever. Three turnovers, a fumble recovery by Nolan Smith, and then interceptions by Smith and Kobe Dean. And just like that, in two minutes and 16 seconds, a 3 nothing game is a 24 to nothing game. Florida gets the ball to start the third quarter, and they'll work from the 25-yard line after Camarda's kickoff goes into the end zone as we check in with Jamie. Well, I just watched Dan Mullen go around and address a lot of different players. What he's trying to do on the sideline is keep the guys loose. He said when we made mistakes on defense, especially guys just tensed up a couple interceptions later, and he thought their defense played great football in the first half. And, of course, those mistakes by Anthony Richardson, he said this kid is still learning how to grow into this game and into this offense, and it will remain Anthony Richardson at quarterback for Florida for the rest of this game. Yes. We'll take the snap right here to start the third quarter from the 25. On the ground, maybe a yard for Malik Davis. Our first half trends. Stetson Bennett, a bad interception, but a perfectly thrown touchdown pass to Kiaris Jackson, part of his 8 out of 14. Richardson, two interceptions and a fumble lost in the last couple of minutes of the quarter. And that's how you close a half. <laughs> 21 points in two and a half minutes. And it's 24 to nothing. Two backs in there right now. And Richardson keeps it. And he's going to get close to the first down, about a yard shy. So it's a read play, but watch Jordan Davis right here. Watch this is a 350, 60 pound man. Watch him over the top. If the running back had it, he would have been down. But that's the type of defensive line play that has caught everybody's eye. They gave up 68 rushing yards in the first half, which is more than they give up per game. And flags all over the place. 
Davis. Ball start, 72 on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. And a third and one becomes a third and six. Georgia defense doesn't have to bring pressure. Four's enough. Play action, quick throw to the outside. Not going to get the first down. Gamble, the tight end, makes the catch, but Quay Walker has been all over the field today. Well, everybody, and me in particular, think that Kobe Dean, the interception for a touchdown, one of the great players in the league, but Quay Walker doesn't have to take much of a back seat. No, he doesn't. This is an elite front seven. No one has really been able to get to the secondary because those guys up front won't let you get there so far this year. Talk about a front seven, but it's really about a front 14 yeah. as many yeah. guys as they have. Thankfully, they can only play seven. <laughs> That's true. Fair catch taken right at the 30 yard line by Kiaris Jackson. A couple minutes in Georgia on offense when we return. St. John's River flowing north through Jacksonville. And Vesco brings you today's scholar athletes for Georgia to Kobe Dean, who's got an interception return for a touchdown. Florida, Justin Shorter, the wide out. And Vesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to Georgia and Florida's general scholarship fund. Beautiful day in Jacksonville. They've extended the series to be in this city for the foreseeably near future. Unless something changes, option for the schools to keep this game to 2025. Georgia from the 30. Zamir White behind Stetson Bennett. will get the carry. And spins his way for five. Ness, uh, Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator calling plays now. You got to kind of look at the offense with Georgia, not really try to figure out exactly what their pass run ratio is because half the plays they've run this season have been with a 14 or more point lead. So it kind of distorts your play calling yeah. in the second half of these games. Good point. Amir White got five. got about three more to bring up third down and two. Well, we know the one mistake that Stetson Bennett make, and we saw this during halftime, and Brad expertly said, don't throw it. <laughs> that 0 for 2 with a pick doesn't look good in that far corner of the end zone. Yep. Don't, don't need to play in the NFL to see that. <laughs> third down and short. <laughs> Opening offensive possession for Georgia. Got those two big tight ends in Fitzpatrick and Darnell Washington both lined up to the left. Let's see if they run that way. Nope, straight up the middle. First downs in your white. Give me another interesting stat. I just went in a little bit deep into this offense. 50% of the plays Georgia has run this year, not undefeated, right, have been with three wide receivers. That puts them 103rd in the country. Wow. At 50 percent of their plays with three wide receivers. They'd rather have three tight ends out there. Exactly. That's just how many spread offenses now yeah. are in college football. First down from the 42. One of those tight ends, Bowers, in motion. It's a toss sweep to Kenny McIntosh. And he got it out across the 45. Nice job that time by Warren McClendon, number 70, the right tackle. Good job at the end man of line of scrimmage that time. Very athletic, moving his feet, kept moving him. Starter a year ago. Let's keep an eye on him right here, see how he handles. I think it's Brenton Cox he's going to have to get on. Yes, it is. Cox, he runs a pass and smartly turned up inside by McIntosh. Second down and five. McIntosh again trying to weave his way to a first down and with all the pushing he got close. That and ball. the ball out at the end. Now they're calling him down. Take another look. Oh, I don't know. 
Was his right knee right down? Knee no, I think. Like it. Yeah, was was his right knee down before? I don't think Man, so. Maybe I think not. that's going to be called a fumble. Now, was it immediately the ball was moving? Was it immediately, <laughs> even though the whistle blew, there can be an immediate recovery here. They're going to take a look. Review I think, underway. I think it was. Richard Torrance, number 22, got it. Gene Steratore is going to join us, Gene. Another similar play where we had a pile of bodies and the, and the forward progress continues to move forward without a stoppage. And, and in my opinion there, that ball is loose before that right knee or any other body part hits the ground. And as Gary already said, with the quick whistle and the immediate continuing action, that recovery occurs and they will put that as part of the finality of the play uh, and, and, and allow that to occur, the recovery as well. So two big plays by Rashad Torrance today. One, an interception and now we think a fumble recovery Jim, off McIntosh carry. One quick point here for the official. Should he, you know, have called that a fumble in a perfect world, should he be saying that fumble so he doesn't get the whistle when it's that close? Yeah, you should, Gary. And, 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 and as replay has evolved, it's always safer to definitely allow plays to go right. and come back if he's down. After further review, the runner fumbled prior to being down. The ball is recovered by Florida. First down, Florida. Gators take over. Two big plays by number 22. So, you know, after that LSU game, this Florida defense caught it <laughs> big time. Yep. You know, and they have stepped up in this game. You have to admit, they played a really good football game. They got shocked on that one deep pass. But for the most part, they've been up to the challenge today against Georgia. Well, for the people who always want Todd Grantham's head, you can't put yeah, on those right. guys today. <laughs> That's for sure. So, just shaded on the Georgia side of midfield. Florida first down off the turnover. And Pierce goes inside the 45 to the 44. Quay Walker, another tackle. No one's saying, obviously, this game is not over. I mean, one touchdown changes everybody's thoughts. A early turnover, one score here, maybe a field goal. And right away, the Georgia offense starts to feel the pressure. Keep it on the ground, cutting it outside is Pierce. Got the edge and the sideline. Big play. Damian Pierce. Good job this time by Josh Brown, number 72. He's in the game as the backup because of the injury to White. Watch him turn his guy inside, stay with him just enough, and allow Damian Pierce to get to the outside. Pickup of 18 down to the Georgia 26. Florida try to pay off the turnover. Richardson, no pitch, he'll keep it. And he goes for about four. Yeah, he couldn't pitch it. Nicobe Dean, really good job that time by that Georgia defense assignment football. Dean doesn't look at the quarterback, he looks at the pitch man. He's got a job to do. Watch him track outside for the pitch man. He lets his teammates kick the big the tackle. That's the discipline of running a good defense. Because I'm pretty sure Jalen Carter's got my back. He <laughs> did. Second and seven. Quarterback draw all the way. Ooh, what a wicked hit put on by Adams. Uh, Anderson, I beg your pardon. The movement of this defense makes you think back to those, you know, Alabama defenses with the past, the LSU defense, the 9-6 year when there were, you know, maybe 15 NFL players on the field. Yeah. These guys are moving like NFL players, and that hit forced to change. Emory Jones in a quarterback. And now four wide receivers to his left. As Richardson on the sideline. A little bit shaken up. Quick throw out to the left. And it's going to be a first down and a bunch more. Down to the 11 is Henderson. How about being ready if you're Emory Jones? Now, on those short passes, it's important to lead the guy forward. If he has to turn, it's not going to get the positive territory. It puts it right on the money so that the receiver that time, it's Henderson, can just turn up field and get the first down. So after the fumble recovery, Florida's work to the Georgia 11. 
Henry Jones, a Georgia native out of LaGrange. Malik Davis behind him gets the toss sweep. And he's going to throw it. Option incomplete. It was close. Xavier Henderson, the intended receiver. Yeah, but Darian Krendrick, number 11 that time, the transfer from Clemson, former five star cornerback. He's played man to man coverage coming into this game 195 times. He's only had 16 targets. This time he's able to get back just in time to force a perfect throw. Nessie's only given up five completions all year. He's good. Here's Emory Jones doing his running thing and down to the six. Third down. Well, we do know this. If you're calling plays, you got two to get the first down or touchdown. Under seven minutes in the third quarter. Florida trying to score for the first time on this drive. They can get a first down without scoring. Only four offensive touchdowns allowed by Georgia all year. None so far today, obviously. They can get the first at the one yard line. Jones batted up in the air and completes. And that was Keely Ringo. Boy, was Georgia ready for the wheel on that time? The linebackers were talking to each other, and they were ready for the wheel route. It came, and they reacted perfectly. Watch this right here. Quay Walker's going, I got the wheel. I've got you take that side. Jake, you get over on the other <laughs> side. I'm ready for that wheel route. Here it comes. Watch him duck outside and take it away. Beautiful defense. Keely Ringo says, I'm not going to let it get that far. So it'll be a 23-yard field goal attempt by Jace Chrisman to try to at least get the Gators something out of that turnover, and he missed. Wide left. And it's still Georgia pitching a shutout. Remember, at this point, Florida has a record. They have not, they have scored in four, what, 418 straight games? They're still at zero. Because they... The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Jersey Mike's. Wheels up. Marathon. And by Mercedes-Benz. Look inside the annual spooktacular event at the Jacksonville Zoo, the 34th edition. Takes over nine months to prepare that, and the zoo is stocked with a one and a half million pieces of candy. Ugga only eats about six pieces of candy a day. <laughs> no chocolate. Missed field goal. Georgia takes over. Florida still hasn't scored. Hasn't been a banner day for kickers so far. First down at the 20. Play fake. Bennett. He's going to keep it. Has to. Nobody open. So he picks up about five. You always got to keep your eye inside those big guys that blocked the field goal the last time. Davis and Carter. Did they get it this time? I nope. don't think so. Just missed it. Yep. Carter, of course, blocked an extra point two weeks ago against Kentucky. So as Gary says, you always have to look inside, see if one of those guys <laughs> got a big paw on it. Got a good chance. Stetson Bennett got six. Second down and four. We're under six minutes in the third quarter. Blitz coming. Zamir White dropped. Nice open field tackle. That guy's had a good game. Rashad Torrance. Yeah. He uh, always has a good game. He's a good football player. They've struggled tackling, but I, I think when I watch Torrance, he seems to be the most active coming from that secondary making plays. Got beat on that long pass, but that's sometimes when you line up 15 yards deep, you misjudge that speed right at you. And when you're that deep, you go, come on, he's not going long. That's not right. right. Third down, a long three. James Cook in the backfield with Bennett. Moves his tight end, Fitzpatrick in closer. 
And that's the way Cook goes, and he got the first down. Let's check in with Jamie and update on Anthony Richards. Yeah, he headed to the medical tent in the middle of that last series. In, during one of the plays, we saw him take a hit to the shoulder and or helmet area. Um, the team doesn't say anything official. However, he has headed to the locker room with several team officials. So I'm going to go ahead and say he's under evaluation for the upper body hit that he took. All right, Jamie, thanks. It could have been shoulder. It could have been the concussion of that hit on his helmet head right there, too. Thinking about a blitz on first down, back away from it. Bennett throws down the middle. Oh, a diving catch by McConkey. Did he control it? It bounced in the air. Did it bounce off the ground? We find out on this replay, I guess. Stretches right over there, just outside. Man. All right, this has got to be clear. Oh, oh that there bounced. we go. Yep. Good call. Great attempt by number 84, former walk-on. It was a dangerous throw, Brenton Cox, number one. Perfect, you know, when you're throwing in those lanes over the middle, and Stetson did a good job. You're just outside the one guy. You don't want to lead him into another linebacker. You take the first window available, and he did. Over 10 minutes into this quarter, that was Georgia's first pass of the half. Another one's coming right here, and it's Bo! The tight end, as he's done all year with another big play. I tell you, this is just an NFL play. Todd Munkin, experienced in the NFL, those athletic tight ends. Everybody's doing this right now. You put the tight end block and you turn around the screen. Your offensive linemen are allowed to go downfield because the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage. And then you get an athlete getting that ball in space right away. Beautifully designed play. Everybody's doing it now, especially with guys as physical and athletic as Bowers. <laughs> the previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field of whether the runner stepped out of bounds is under review. That was just like watching Kelsey catch a ball for the Chiefs right there, right? right? Exactly. I mean, I know he's only a freshman, Gary, but I haven't seen a tight end any place in the country who's played better than this kid so far. Did he step he's still. Out? I don't think he did. I don't think so either. I didn't see any white chalk. Still digging up some green. So finally right yeah, there. About four extra yards. Right now they're calling a 43 yard pickup to the 24. Yeah. Worst case it's a 39. Right. <laughs> either way. I mean he had a 89 yarder earlier this year. He's also rushed for a touchdown on top of leading Georgia with six touchdown receptions. <laughs> That's about as close as you can cut it right there. Look at Kirby running down the sideline behind him again. After further review, the runner stepped out at the 29-yard line. It will be first and 10 at the 29. All right, so it's not quite as long, but they'll take it. After this screen pass, Stetson Men, let's see if he got tackled. His legs kind of got caught a little bit. I think he just turns around to see if it was uh, to the referee to see if he got a late hit call, but he didn't. Jervon Dexter was the guy bringing him down. And so they move that line of scrimmage to the 29. They call it a 38 yard pickup instead of 43. Side. That's about as tough of a one yard run as you're going to get as he swarmed under by a whole host of Gators there. Some of the connections both ways for these teams. Will Muschamp, defensive back at Georgia, was Florida head coach. Now he's back as an assistant with the Dogs. Todd Grantham's been defensive coordinator at both places. Christian Robinson, Georgia linebacker, is now the Florida linebacker coach. Brent Cox, we mentioned, wore number one for Georgia. Wearing number one for Florida. And there's Todd Grantham, whose defense has really played pretty well today. Number 21 of the points for Georgia off turnovers, including a pick six by Nicobe Dean. James Cook, tough run on the inside. Brought down by Diabate. 
Nestle, you, I think you could confirm this. You live in Georgia area, know the Georgia people. I saw this one little quote from a Georgia fan where he said, I have faith in a Georgia offensive coordinator for the first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Is that about summing up for the Georgia I fans? think if the guys I hang out with would probably agree with that. <laughs> for the first time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> They're down in three. Georgia in field goal range, but looking for a first down. They need to get to the 19. Bennett flares it out. Oh. Cook, oh man, took it right in the stomach from Diabate, and he maybe got a yard. I think it was Dean, zero on the play. Trey Dean coming up from the sec secondary on the play. Yes, he did. Was Dean, nice play. Coming up from the secondary, good man-to-man -man coverage. Come up, get your man. Diabate gets the hit on the quarterback, and Dean comes up and makes the tackle. And George is going for it. On fourth down and a yard. Stetson Bennett asking for it. Flags fly. Kirby Smart's out on the field right now. Full start. 70 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That's going to be on McClendon. And that will change the strategy. Warren McClendon, I think, feels that the ball is going to be snapped on the clap. Watch Stetson Bennett. Does he clap? Yes, he claps, and I think McClendon goes, I thought we were going on the second clap, <laughs> and they weren't. Jack Leslie in to try a 43-yard field goal. Missed earlier from 46. Out of a Jake Kamara hold. Kick on the way, and this one is good. But Lesney, officially from 42, makes it 27 to nothing, Georgia. Let's take a look at our GMC Game Changer. Let's call it Game Changers. How about in two minutes and 16 seconds after a fumble recovery by Nolan Smith, James Cook goes 11 yards for the score. Richardson comes back and off a ricochet in the secondary. Nolan Smith, who had recovered a fumble earlier, gets the INT. Then a 36-yard pickup. Stetson Bennett to Harris Jackson. And then a pick six at the 50-yard line of Kobe Dean. Says, I'll see you later. And in 216, Georgia scored 21 points. That's your GMC game changers. Yeah, two big mistakes by Anthony Richardson. Leading his eyes and allowing the outside linebacker Walker that time to sneak into the throwing lane on the first interception. And the second one, when you're throwing the ball to the running back, those linebackers squat on him. And it was a late throw and it cost him. Yep. Kamara to kick off. And fair catch taken at the one yard line. CBS Tuesday from executive producer Dick Wolf. These elite teams prove that justice has no borders. First, it's FBI, then FBI International, and end the night with FBI Most Wanted. These three teams are all on one night. The FBI's Tuesday, starting at 8, 7 Central on CBS. The FBI's are investigating how Georgia's defense can keep playing like this week in and week out. In this case, beware of all of these dogs. Henry Jones at the controls. They keep it on the ground, and that is going nowhere. A loss of a yard. Tyndall makes the stop on Naquan Wright. So Dan Lanning calls a run blitz because he knows inside he's got a guy that is going to take up space and allow Beal to come from the backside and make the play. Can't move him. He covers both A-gaps just standing there. A-gap to the right, A-gap to this left. All the gaps. Here's Naquan right again. Got some positive yardage that time. So the stats of a nose tackle are never great. They don't make a lot of tackles. But this is what they do. They stand up the offensive line, nowhere to go, bounce the play back the other way, doesn't get knocked down. What Big Jordan has always said, if it's two on me, somebody's free. You got it. Well, good ones do that. They pay a lot of money for that in the next level. <laughs> wonder if they pay a lot of money for that at this level. Well, with the NIL deals, I guess you can get at least a nice suit, like yes, Jimmy said. 
Henry Jones fires complete first down to Justin Shorter. Good protection that time from the Georgia offensive line. Remember, Emory Jones has been hitting 70% of his passes over the last four games. He's going to have to hit a whole bunch more in the fourth quarter if the Gators are going to come from behind. The end of three, a shutout still for the Bulldogs. The Home Depot SEC at CBS heads into the fourth quarter and Georgia in control 27 to nothing here in Jacksonville Florida's got a little something working right now with Emory Jones at quarterback he drops back wanted to throw still looking to get it downfield and throws high and incomplete and has to pick himself off the turf although I wonder how many people have said you know Emory Jones should have started this game. <laughs> and it goes Florida to fans that we're looking for Richardson to be a star you know I always say to win the championship you got to win a couple clutch games you know Georgia's dominated all year clutch game against Clemson to start the year and I think the way they ended the half this was a tight game yep. you know they made the plays at championship level defensively the question now is is there enough offense for a championship? There's always something to think about. Complain about. That's exactly right. Call in the talk shows about. <laughs> they quite right for a couple. Dan Mullen, everything was going well last year. They've scored in an NCAA record 417 straight games. They haven't scored in this one. Still have 14 and a half minutes to do something about that. Dan Lanning's defense hoping to prevent that. As Georgia has done so many times already this year, they have two conference shutouts, which is almost unheard of. If they shut out Florida, it's really going to be something. Jones down the middle. Nice throw and catch. Complete the zipper. And a first down. Again, uh, Florida also uses their tight ends, Zipper and Gamble, even at third and long. And Gamble gets to the second level. And good job that time of moving up in the pocket by Emory Jones. That's what really helps those tackles. So climb yourself into that pocket and make the throw. First down just inside the Georgia 40. Run on the inside by Pierre. And a good one. Damian Pierce goes for 11 more. Yeah, Pierce, you know he wants to gain yards. He's from the same town as Kirby. Right. He's had a couple nice runs today. 61 yards on six carries, in fact. Naquan Wright, nothing doing. Jeez, man. Latavius Greeny. Greeny is the star in this defense, the star position we're talking about. He plays really the outside safety to the field and takes on the blocker and makes the play. You know, Kirby, I mentioned before, this is the 418th game. 417 in a row they've scored. You know Kirby knows that they've got the record. He would love a shutout. Jones will take off. Henry Jones puts his head down and gets to the 21. The Kobe Dean there to stop him short of the first down. Third and short coming up. We also know this from Kirby, right? Now, Ness, he'll never admit it. No, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, he, That's the first thing he'll say. He does that. not uh, let much out of the, the locker room, I'll tell you that. It's, it's set in the locker room, stays in the locker room with Kirby. Two down territory, one would assume here, and third down and a long one, and it's Emory Jones not getting the one or the long one. So now what does Tim Mullen do? 27 to nothing. He's aware of not being shut out. He went field goal last time. Be almost a little embarrassing to go field goal here, wouldn't it? Kind of. 
So I, I think they're going to go for it. I think Gator fan would say, come on, you can't go field. That's what that guy just said, I think. Right there. <laughs> Who cares about the field goal? We picked one random person yeah, out there. Be a man. Be, what a, you be said. a man and go for it. <laughs> the Georgia fans are saying, uh-uh, you're not getting that one. Or in this case, almost two yards. The shift on the defensive. Oh, front he moved. Rocks. He rocked back. The shift got him again. So it's not fourth and a long one or two anymore. Also, Gene DeLance, number 50, sticks. I think that's the lane right there. Both there. He just, oh, oh. both of them. Reese and DeLance kind of lean back. So slight, but it's a flag nonetheless. And they're still going for it. Now fourth and seven. Now this is how you complete shutouts. You stop a play like this, and the other side's going to get a little demoralized if they aren't already. That was the fourth false start suffered by the Gators today. Part of it might be the Georgia fans' noise. Fourth and seven. Emory Jones across the middle. Now Kobe Dean almost had another one. Couldn't hold the interception, but Georgia takes over on downs. And Kobe Dean does a great job this time of reading Emory Jones's eyes. I think this is here, and he just kind of drifts with the look across the field. They're playing zone. He goes across, cuts in front. What a play. Wasn't even his man on that play. Butkus Award is starting to look kind of appetizing to number 17, isn't it? Adam Zucker with the Heisman Watch, presented by Nissan, and Kenneth Walker the third with five touchdowns against Michigan. The Spartans needed all of them to erase a 16-point deficit as he went over 1,000 yards on the season as well. And Caleb Williams keeping Oklahoma top four, five touchdowns and approaching 400 passing yards, up 38-14 to 14 on Texas Tech right now. As we go back to Ness, Gary, and Jamie. All right, Zuck, thanks. 10.46 remaining. Don't forget, later in the game, it's the play of the game. Presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Could be a variety of plays by the Georgia defense, probably. Three tight ends in the game. And the handoff. Zamir White. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, we noticed something kind of funny during our rehearsal yesterday, didn't we, guys? The painted names of the schools in the end zone here in Jacksonville. Florida's like half the size of the north of Georgia. We thought they got gypped, but we checked. We did some digging. The schools provide the stencils to the stadium, so it is the exact same Florida that they see in Gainesville, but it just looks funny when it's compared to Georgia across the end zone here in Jacksonville. You know, I have a theory that it's a little bit how they play. You know, Georgia takes up the entire end zone and they <laughs> block it. No one's allowed in. Florida, very sleek, very skinny. Keep it up and down the field. What do you think, Gary? Our stencil's bigger than yours. I think that's what they're working on. Scott Strickland will say we had to change that next Jamie, year. Jamie, just a little side bet. I bet you the Florida lettering is bigger next year. That's what I said. Scott really? Strickland, I mean, AD's going to say, <laughs> get a bigger dead get a stencil. Bigger, bigger stencil. And maybe, maybe the white, too. You know, the Georgia really pops from up here. got to see the Florida a little bit better. Get a graphic design major on it. I think, that, that, I think that should be an assignment coming up. People would be surprised what goes on at our booth rehearsal on Friday. <laughs> a lot of singing and a lot of yep. field analysis. That's right. Ten minutes remaining in this one. What could have been, that's what Dan Mullen's thinking right now. I could have got out of the half. Yep. Empty backfield. Stetson Bennett has played the entire way. Quarterback for Georgia. He's going to run it here. Straight up the middle and he got a first down. Well, that's what he does well when he has to. He does give you the idea to run him a lot. He's not big enough to run a lot. Remember in this game, he got knocked out, getting hit on the shoulder early in the game. It kind of changed the game in that one. And there's JT right there. People, another conversation we have in the booth, the last commercial was, will they get JT Daniels some practice reps in this game? If you look forward in the schedule, Missouri, George, Charlotte Southern, Georgia Tech, they've got games to get them ready. The at Tennessee game, though, you got to wonder if they're going to have to score some points. You're always looking ahead. What could be a stunner? That's a couple weeks from now. Here's James Cook dancing in the hole. Dan 
bouncing out of it. And getting a good game before Rashad Torrance makes it this, back. We, it's the second time we've seen Georgia up close. If you're going to beat them, you better be really good. I mean, it, it's going to take a, an elite offense, and uh, you're going to have to be able to stay on the field, and your defense has to match up against this high dynamic uh, run game that they have as well. Let's face it, what the question is going to be, and I don't care if Georgia fans, if this is another shutout, right. what they're going to say is if we get to Atlanta and if it's Alabama, is this guy good enough to beat the tie? That's always the case. When you're the backup quarterback and you're like a walk on, it's always going to be a question is he good enough? Here comes a blitz. James Cook takes it outside to avoid that blitz and a first down into Florida territory. He said, I was that close to breaking it open all the way. Again, extra tight end of the field. Bowers does a good job, number 19 at the end of the line, and they continue to move the chains. I tell you, this dynamic look of the tight ends really gives you a different look. They're athletic enough, they keep at least two on the field all the time, and you know, if you think they're just blockers, no way. They can hurt you, as we've seen in this game. Both those guys are in the 6-6 category. Washington and Fitzpatrick. Play action, a good one. And Bennett, Aaron at long. Got A.D. Mitchell out there, but it's underthrown, and it's picked off by Torrance again. Remember earlier when he threw one like that, and I said, you got to be careful that inside deep ball. A good safety will eat that up. That ball has to be outside the numbers. Must account for this guy right here, and the target has to be outside. Lead him to the outside. He led him to the inside, right into the safety. And underthrown as well. So Rashad Torrance, he can rest his head on the pillow tonight and say, well, I think I did my part. It's his second interception. And we are underway. Intercepted by the Gators. Georgia took the ball away. Nolan Smith took the ball away. Five, three, one, touchdown. Go. Going deep to the end zone. Kiaris Jackson. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. Touchdown to Kobe. Pick six. And that was a look at our ally game. Cap, and if you're a Florida fan, it's been pretty frightening here on Halloween weekend. Stetson Bennett just threw a second interception, not a good ball. Anthony Richardson left the game with an injury. Nolan Smith, big game, fumble recovery, and an interception. And to Kobe Dean, as you saw, interception for a touchdown. And Stetson Bennett took a shot after throwing that pass that was picked off at the 11 yard line. Yeah, he took a shot there, and then he got one from Kirby on the sideline when he got to the sideline. A verbal one, though. So Emory Jones and the offense takes over at the 11 with 742 midway point here in the final quarter. Hesitates and then throws it out in the flat. Maybe a one yard pickup for Malik Davis as Keely Ringo knocked him out of bounds. When you turn on Georgia tape, remember two corners a year ago drafted. They play much more zone defense, more what they call field defense. They line them in their coverage. They just play the wide side of the field. Whatever formation you have, they just line up that way and then slide to it. You see Florida scored a lot of points, 18 of the last 21, 30 plus. They got a zero up there on the board right now. Four years ago, they scored with 240 to go in the game and one that Georgia won 42 to 7. They would love to avoid the shutout. Georgia trying to preserve what would be their third conference shutout. And we've got seven minutes to go. Justin Shorter on an 18-yard pickup. Yeah, the way uh, Emory moved into the pocket, it was almost like one of those quarterback play action passes where he feigns a little bit inside and then throws the slant behind the linebackers. Blitz off the corner. Jones down the middle again and complete again to Xavier Henderson. Georgia hasn't lost since they played to Florida last year. This would be 12 in a row. Florida 
eight and six and only two of those eight wins were against power five competition. So the last year has gone dramatically different for these two teams. Second and short Jones nice move in the hole to get the first down. Channing Tindall brought him down, but we're under six minutes. Well, you can see the skill set of Emory Jones, a five-star recruit committed to Ohio State. When Dan Mullen came in, he flipped him back to Florida, and he's always been high on him. But, uh, you know, there's always another guy in yeah. college ball. And when you're losing games, they give other guys try. Short pass out in the flat to Malik Davis. I, I don't recall in this game that Georgia has missed a tackle. Where I went, oh, they should have had that guy. And, oh. Not many if there has been. Yes. And usually I think, okay, this is just the defense, you know, playing safe and letting them have yards. I don't think that here. I think this Georgia defense wants to stop them and put a goose egg up there. They're five minutes away from it. Jones pitch an easy catch and Justin Shorter out there nobody on him. So they move the sticks in the Georgia territory. And a first down after pickup of 16. Keely Ringo that time dropped very deep. He thought he had help underneath. As soon as the ball was completed, he started yelling to Dan Lanning like, oh wait, where, where was our where was our coverage in the flat that time? Mix up in the zone. Jones throws short over the middle, but it's good for Copeland to get but he get a first down very close. Got to give credit to this offensive line on this drive. Uh, each time Georgia has brought a different fourth man in the rush. They're not really blitzing. They're bringing the three up front defensive linemen and a different backer each time, and it's been picked up nicely by the Florida offensive line. Ran a long ways to get two yards as Georgia just kept stretching it out. Kendrick finally knocks him out next Saturday. College football doubleheader here on CBS. 11.30 a.m. Eastern battle for the Commander in Chiefs trophy between Army and Air Force. Then at three, he's looking the guy State Farm College football today. We'll recap the action and get you ready for the second leg of our doubleheader. There's the menu. We'll keep you posted. That's next Saturday right here on CBS. I think they uh, had Xavier Henderson that time holding in the slot on the play, a late flag. So backs it up outside, just outside the 35. 356 and the clock ticking. And that NCAA record streak of not being held scoreless, 417 games. And Georgia trying to keep a zero up there for Florida, which would be their third conference shutout of the year. And again, Jalen Carter jumped into the neutral zone, but it looked like maybe the right tackle moved as well. Yeah, but did he react to the movement by Carter? That's right. going to be the, the discussion here. And that is the call going to be offside on Georgia. No penalty. Coach Saban turns 70 tomorrow. Michigan State retains the Paul Bunyan Trophy. Navy beats Tulsa on the ground. You got to wonder if it's an off week for Coach Saban and the Crimson Tide. And I'm sure Miss Terry is probably going to have some kind of birthday get together for him for Halloween. He's probably going to say, "That's all right. You can bring a few people, but bring it to the office, exactly. you know, because I don't have time for this right. nonsense. I got to watch film." <laughs> Happy birthday, Coach. It's season. He's a grinder. Yeah, that's right. Jones, Same far thing. side. Yeah, somebody's missing an assignment yeah. over there. And Ringo again, and he goes right to the bench like, what's the deal here? Corner's dropping about 25 yards, and either he's mistaken with the defense or somebody else's, but he was not. Watch this bail on it. Nobody to the outside. He expects a switch for Greeny to go out there, and he doesn't. 
hit him on here. Yep, he's coming out. <laughs> and Kirby's going to follow him six yards deep on the sideline. And that's where Keeley will be for maybe the foreseeable future. Jones down the middle. And do we have a flag? Yes, we do. Seems going to be called for pass interference. And it was Kamari Gamble, the tight end, the intended receiver. Song safety on the tight end, just a kind of a, a little wrap around. Yeah, a little banana route, and he gets his right hand on the hip and, or right shoulder and elbow. Pass and interference turns on the defense, number two. That foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. So it's first and goal for the Gators. Last shutout, 1988. Auburn, 16 to nothing. 417 games. This is 418. Ray goes back out of the field for the Georgia defense. I would think this might be Emory Jones on a run from the two. We'll see. Georgia shifts on their front again. And it's Emory Jones. And it's a flag flying, and it's a touchdown, Florida. And there goes the shutout, unless the flag is on Florida. I think it was a face mask on the play. Emory Jones, as he's going in, gets grabbed on the play. That was the call, I believe. Definitely scores on the play. Yep. Here's the call. The result of the play was a touchdown by Florida. There is no foul for a face mask on the play. The defensive player grabbed the collar of the runner. All right, so we'll just pick up the flag and the streak. Oh, looked like he had the face mask to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a high collar That's right there. Jordan Davis. <laughs> That's a big hand, too. <laughs> That's, that's putting the collar away up. I there. think so. <laughs> that's one of those turtleneck collars. <laughs> well, the Gators avoid the shutout and go 89 yards in 10 plays. And we'll have an onside kick coming up shortly after Chris Howard comes in for the point after. When did you say they scored last time? 252? 247 Seven, four three, years ago. Oh, okay. Plenty Almost of time. Exactly. Yeah. Two seconds. And the extra point is good. So Emory Jones didn't start the game. He's going to finish the game. Kirby Smart's defense wanted a shutout. They don't get one. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Royal Caribbean. Aflac. AT&T 5G. And by Boya Financial. The sun starts to set here in Jacksonville. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, happy Halloween, guys. I've been trick-or-treating down here in honor of this Georgia defense, and I think I found the perfect candy because you could pick any of these guys and they'd be the three musketeers. There's a bunch of stars bursting onto the scene for this defense, and they're pulling twix out on anybody. But Jordan Davis, this is his kryptonite. All right. Swedish fish. It feels a little weird to give a mini Swedish fish, but hey, he's got to keep that weight under 350. So I was going to, feels a little early, but I was going to toss it to him. Maybe I'll give it to him post game. I thought he was eating the healthy kind well, of he did things. switch to the healthy brand, um, but I think after a game like this, you got to give him the original kind, I, I right? I think you're At right. A celebration. <laughs> Here comes an onside kick, and it's going to go out of bounds. So Georgia will be taking over with 2.49 to go. Dan Mullen had Florida rolling this time last year, and they went on to lose four games at the end of the season. Now they're going to be under 500 in the SEC. So there's always heat in this league, whatever coach you are, wherever you are. All Georgia today with a couple minutes to go.
Adam Zucker in New York with this Jeep update. We told you earlier Caleb Williams had five touchdowns. Number six for the Sooners came soon after. Over 400 yards on the day. No interceptions. They're up large on Texas Tech. They've even gone to Spencer Rattler at this point. We'll see if they're top four in those first CFP rankings, guys. But we know who number one's going to be. Yeah, we've been looking at them. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Zucker, what you're going to do when we're done here, you, Rick, and BJ will have the best highlights in the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. So to this point in the game, because of those turnovers and one play scores, Georgia's only run 50 plays the whole game. And in the second half, throwing the ball five times, the last one being an interception. They basically... With the exception of their field goal from Pudlesny of 42 yards, haven't really had a drive today except the opening possession right. of the ball game because they had a six-second drive, which was James Cook, 11-yard touchdown after a Nolan Smith fumble recovery, a pick six by Nicobe Dean, yep. and the other uh, was the 38-yard touchdown pass. So those aren't drives. Those are just one place. Jerry Palm, college football projection entering today. Well, you can scratch Michigan, in Jerry's opinion, from being number two right. because they lost today. Alabama was idle. Cincinnati goes to 8-0. No. Oklahoma, as Adam just told you, on their way to uh, route over Texas Tech. Michigan State beat Michigan. Ole Miss plays tonight uh, against Auburn. And so it goes. We find out on Tuesday nights if indeed this team is the number one team in the country. Pretty sure Zamir White's going to make sure. Touchdown, Georgia. 42 yards for the capper. Here comes the LSU fourth quarter offense right here, the counter play. Zamir White lined up to the right, but watch how he follows the guard and the H back into the hole. This is what LSU did to the Florida defense in the fourth quarter. They gassed him just like that and took it to the house. I mentioned the two quote unquote drives of one play and then an interception for a touchdown by Nakobe Dean. That was a two yard drive for 46 yards and a season long run for Zamir White. And the extra point to make it 34 to 7. Well, for 52 plays, Georgia has 354 yards. That's not bad. That's good points per yard. Beautiful day in Jacksonville, Florida, unless you're a Florida fan. 34 to 7, top ranked Georgia. And there'll be some more. Um, Partying outside the stadium in the world's largest outdoor social function. <laughs> when this one's over. Or they may just start now. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> They've been doing it since this morning. I, I should say since Thursday night. But. Dick Kamara to kick off. Florida will have one more possession. And again, by the time Georgia gets back to Athens tonight, they may know whether they're the champs of the SEC East. Because Kentucky and Mississippi State, by the time they get everything put together, get back to campus, that game might be over. And if Mississippi State beats Kentucky, Georgia's got a date in Atlanta. And the way they played today, they've got a date in Atlanta. I'm pretty sure in their future anyway. Yeah, their, their sights are set a lot higher than just a date there. They, of course, want to get there, but they want to finish the season off on top, playing for the national championship. Kirby Smart has said early in the year to his team when they were having a bad practice, we're not practicing to just win this week. We're practicing to beat everybody. Yep. And I think his defense has taken that to heart for sure. <laughs> Still hitting on the inside, that's for sure. Florida's remaining schedule. They have to try to regroup now as they fall to four and four, or will shortly. And they're going to be two and three in the conference. South Carolina, Sanford, at Missouri, and then Florida State. Jones 
Play fake. Wants to throw. Just got rid of it and almost picked off again. Dumas Johnson had a hand on it. Some of the backup Georgia defenders getting time, and this guy almost had himself an interception. Yeah, I thought he had this one. He tipped it up, but he could have. It would have been a, a good catch for a defensive end type player. The ball was past him by the time he tried to catch it. Pierce inside the 30. I beg your pardon, inside the 35. And fourth down, upcoming. That's invented a couple of bad throws today, but still, he is now going to be nine and two as a starter. But that's the scary part. Both of those were first down throws. Tough, you know, when you're a, you know, not a franchise quarterback, you can't make the really egregious bad play. He makes enough good plays, just avoid those real bad ones. And on fourth down. They get the first down, and it's Malik Davis. Stetson Bennett knows that he had a couple of bad throws, but boy, this got to feel better than it did last year. It was a losing effort, and he got hurt. And today he can say, "Hey, we got a W." He sure did. Well, he listen. The, the offense works with him. The question is, you brought up before for Georgia fan, does it work good enough? Because it's not just get there; they want to win it all. They've been there before. They want to win it all. They feel they've got a championship defense. And they don't want their offense to be the reason they don't win. It's been 41 years since the 80 national title team for the Dogs. And if you think about this defense in modern college football, the points they've given up all year. I mean, it is amazing. Through eight games now, they're going to give up, have given up 53 points. That is amazing. And this defense is something special. So whether it's the 99th renewal or the 100th renewal of this border rivalry, depending on which school you listen to, they can't even agree on that. But you can agree on one thing. This is the number one team in the country. Yeah, with the rest of their schedule, they'll be big favorites in every game. I'm circling that Tennessee game, though, because they can score. Yep. Let's see if they can score against these guys, though. And now it's time for our play of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And this was Anthony Richardson trying to make a play, a late throw to the outside. Nicobe Dean, the linebacker, picks it off and takes it 50 yards for the Georgia touchdown. Here's how Scott Howard called it on the Georgia Radio Network. And we fake a blitz with Anderson. We'll bring three. Anderson kind of hovers. Pick the Kobe Dean at the 50, 40, 30. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. Touchdown to Kobe. Pick six. Well, dinner was cooking, as Scott called it, because uh, in the matter of about two and a half minutes, Georgia cooked up 21 points. And that is how this game went and how it turned in the dog's favor. And Jamie Erdahl is with the winning coach. And I'm with Nicobe Dean. Yes, you are live, just so you know. Very important man here. I know it is. But, Coach, I wanted to ask just about your defense. You've been a lot of, around a lot of great teams and defenses. Do you have fun watching this group play in a game oh, like I this? I have fun watching these guys practice. These guys go about their meetings and practice every day, so serious, taking notes, getting nuggets. Their coaches do an awesome job. But these kids right here, they're special. And what makes him so special? That he does it the right way every day. This guy leads by example. He does it hard. And that ball he caught over there, he's got the best hands in America, baby. I love it. <laughs> Jacoby, take us back to the final two minutes of that first half. Thanks, Coach. Final two minutes of that first half. How wild was that to play in defensively? It, it, it was crazy, but, you know, uh, we got that first turnover. We know we always say turnovers come in bunches. So uh, we, we just knew we could uh, keep the momentum going and uh, keep turning that ball over. This game, you lost to Florida last year, and it was very defining for the rest of your season. How good? I would assume that listening to Smith right there. Yeah. How good is it when like this field to set you up into November? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely, it definitely feels great to get any kind of win. You know, we came in saying we're gonna be ag aggressive and disciplined. I feel like we did that today. 
as a group, chemistry-wise. What does this defense say to each other to make sure you're propping up Stetson Bennett in the offense? Oh, yeah, we got their back. No, no matter what they do, we got their back 100%. And, and that's how we are, the connection piece and everything like that. <laughs> go celebrate. Okay. I know you want to go have fun, guys. <laughs> now, Kobe's like, I got to get some of that exactly. in the end zone. <laughs> I got a pick six. I get to jump on the wall here. <laughs> oh, the celebration. And Kirby Smart right in the thick of it. One of the stars of the game with a hunt for his coach. We'll have some final comments when we come back to Jacksonville in a 34-7 dog win. Well, the celebration continues here at TIAA Bankfield in Jacksonville. A happy pack of dogs. And as well they should because they continue to remain atop the SEC standings, a perfect 6-0, a perfect 8-0. Florida falls to 2-4 and 4-4. And, and, and again, Kentucky plays Mississippi State tonight to try to keep pace or keep their impressive season going. Gear, I don't think there's going to be any uh, doubt on Tuesday night when the college football playoff rankings come out. Who's number one, right? Not a doubt at all. And this team reminds me of the 2011 Alabama defense that was hungry to finish it. You can tell these guys are focused and hungry to win the championship. And they play as a team on defense. Ugg is going to be happy. Harry Dog's happy. The Dogs fans are happy. They win it, going away. That's going to wrap it up for us, for Gary, Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratore, and our entire CBS crew. Brad Nessler saying so long. From Jacksonville, the final score, top-ranked Georgia 34, Florida Gators 7. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company for the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage right after these messages. Dogs win. Good night from Jacksonville.